flight school. This video will show the differences between the Tier 3 through the Tier 7 carrier aircraft. We will also go over the control buttons for the aircraft carriers and the squadron controls. Then we'll go over the basics of the dive bomber and torpedo bombers. This will include the heads-up display information. Okay, let's take a look at the aircraft and their differences. So we'll start out with uh, Tier 3 over here. This is the Langley. Here you can see that the Langley has high explosive bombers and torpedoes. The important thing is the attack unit is 2 and the aircraft per squadron is 6. So when you make your attack run you will have two airplanes break off from the 6 flight squadron and make the attack. Each of the two squadrons have an engine cooling consumable. The duration is 5 seconds and the reload time is 80 seconds. Number of consumables is 2. So let's take a look at the Tier 5 aircraft carrier. Let's look at their consumables. You see the attack unit size is 2. The aircraft per squadron is still 6. But you do have an extra consumable here for patrol fighters. and. Basically, the patrol fighter will uh, release fighters that will patrol the area and automatically attack enemy aircraft. The consumable duration is 60 seconds and the reload time is 10 seconds. And this is true for the HE bombers or armor-piercing bombers, which we'll go over later, or the torpedo bombers here. The other difference in a Tier 5 aircraft is the upgrades here. You can see that there's two empty upgrade slots and here you can configure upgraded aircraft namely the Douglas Devastator for torpedoes or the Vought Vindicator for uh, dive bombs and you can see here that for the Devastator the squadron will gain a hundred hit points maximum speed will increase by 19 knots aircraft restoration time will be quicker by one second and the maximum torpedo damage goes up 367 hit points so as you look at the aircraft carrier here, you can see that what you start out with on a Tier 5 is the default biplanes. So we'll go and configure the Devastator torpedo bombers. We're going to install those. And you can see now you have mono-wing airplanes instead of biplanes on the back. And that is one of the big difference with the American and Japanese upgraded aircraft. So here we will go ahead and install the Vought Vindicators. Okay, so now when we look at the stats, you see the attack unit size is still two and the aircraft per squadron is still six. You have 10 aircraft on deck, which you had before. The aircraft restoration time is roughly about the same. You can see the damages are increased slightly though but the big difference probably is the maximum speed of both aircraft is uh, around 140 knots to 145 knots with the upgraded tier 5 aircraft so here the difference in the consumables for the tier 7 squadrons is you see that you have the same engine cooling consumable, same patrol fighter consumable, but now you have evasive maneuver consumables and squadron becomes invulnerable to damage for a short period of time. Consumable duration is six seconds, reload time is 150 seconds, and there are two consumables per squadron. So you can see here that the attack unit size is two, the aircraft per squadron is six, but now there are 12 aircraft on deck with the tier 7 but that is with the default aircraft which we'll take a look at here you can see these are uh, they, they are mono wing but they are older mono wing they are not the upgraded aircraft let's take a look at One of these upgrade options so both of the upgrades are hell divers so it's a dual purpose aircraft for the torpedoes it adds 166 hit points for the entire squadron 
increases the maximum speed by five knots. Attack unit size is now three though, so when you buy the upgrade you do get an extra aircraft in your attack unit size. So this could be uh, used for a higher amount of damage per torpedo run or dive bomb run. Aircraft restoration time is reduced by five seconds and now there are three more aircraft on deck for 15. So let's go ahead and select that. So now we will take a look at the bombers and you can see they have changed to the darker blue. These are the uh, advanced upgraded aircraft. Let's do the same thing for the dive bombers. You see the hit points for the squadron is increased by 203. Maximum speed is increased by three knots to 149. Attack unit size is three, as we said. Aircraft restoration time is 65 seconds. And aircraft on deck is now 15, as we said before. Okay, so here's the aircraft carrier with uh, both types of aircraft upgraded. You see it's the same Helldiver bombers, but it's a dual purpose apparently. And I can tell you that the bombers, the dive bombers, the high explosive dive bombers, have two bombs per plane. So you can get up to six hits per dive bomb run. Okay, so the differences in the German aircraft carriers are here you see it's AP bombs, so armor piercing bombs. These will cause citadel hits if you strike your target correctly. But the dive bombers attack the target with a series of powerful armor piercing bombs. They are most effective against large heavily armored targets like battleships and cruisers. You won't really get a citadel hit on a destroyer, but that's kind of what's going on with the German aircraft carriers and their armor piercing bombs. Okay, so let's go over the uh, control settings. So here, this is a normal controller layout for the ship. Everyone is pretty used to this by now. And the aircraft carrier does have some changes. The important change, in addition to the normal ship functions, is R2 launches the squadron. But before you do that, you want to use the square button to select your squadron type, whether it's the torpedo bombers or high explosive bombers or armor piercing bombers. There's not a selection for armor piercing versus high explosive. You get one or the other depending on the aircraft carrier country that you're using. The Germans will have armor piercing and the American and Japanese will have high explosive bombs. But this is pretty much the same as you're used to with the ship control, except for the launch squadron and select squadron type. So now we'll take a look at the squadron controls. Once you're in the air and you take off, you can see over on the left under abilities is landing. And as you're flying, if you hit the down D-pad, you will immediately return to the aircraft carrier your aircraft carrier flight will also return, but at its own leisurely rate. It won't immediately return like you do, but you can return and take off again. So this is good if you have one aircraft left and you don't think uh, the odds are in your favor. You want to go back and get a full squadron. You can do that. The next thing going from left to right is the throttle. So to speed up and slow down your airplanes, you push the throttle forward or backwards. This is also the turning control to maneuver your aircraft in flight as well as adjusting your aiming reticles during attack runs. The next item is info and map. So as you're flying, you can hit the big info and map button there and you could look at the overview map and you can use this to set the autopilot for the aircraft carrier the same way that you can with the normal ship control, but you can do that while you're flying so you don't have to be on the aircraft carrier to reset your autopilot. The next thing when you're flying is the right joystick. It adjusts the camera control so you get a good panning view for your area as you're flying to your targets. You can see none of the square, triangle, circle, or X buttons are used. 
The R2 button is to launch an attack. So as you're flying either your torpedo bombers or dive bombers, once you get into a position where you think you want to initiate the attack, you hit R2. As you're going into the attack, once you get to a point where you want to release the bombs, you hit R2 again, and that's really all there is to it. Okay, well that's basically it for the differences in the different aircraft types and the controller layouts. Let's go into a battle and look at the uh, heads-up display and what all the information and numbers mean. All right, you can see we're in the Tier 5 German aircraft carrier Weiser. It does have armor-piercing bombs instead of high-explosive bombs. You can select between the different types of aircraft to launch by hitting the square button. See there, AP bomber is selected. Here, torpedo bomber is selected. So let's use the torpedo bombers to uh, take off and start off with. So you can see here it tells you take off is R2, as we discussed earlier. So we're going to take off. OK, so the first thing we're going to go over is the throttle control. As I increase the throttle, you can see I'm increasing the throttle, the temperature gauge on the left hand side increases and once it redlines you will not be able to go at your 163 knots anymore, you will start slowing down. And you counter that, you see I'm slowing down now, I'm going to counter that with the engine cooling consumable and there I go right back up to 163 and keep going. And that's basically how the engine consumable works. As for the consumables, the patrol fighter consumable is activated by the right D-pad, the engine cooling consumable is activated by the up D-pad, and the landing activity is activated by the down D-pad. It's not really a consumable, but the icon is there right next to the other consumables. Don't forget, on the Tier 7 carriers, the left D-pad activates the evasive maneuver consumable. Okay, so on the right-hand side of the screen is the, um, the timing reticle for the, the armament. So once you hit R2 here, you can see there's a countdown. That countdown will go to zero. Then you can release the bombs. It turns green. You want to release the bombs before the yellow line hits your target. And once it's hit zero, the countdown hits zero again, you can see that you're going to pull up, and that's how you pull up out of a dive. So the right side of the heads-up display is a countdown for your armament, whether it's arming torpedoes or HE bombs or to time the amount of time before you're going to pull up from the dive. In Tier 7 aircraft carriers, you pull up from the dive a lot quicker than you would normally expect, so you have to watch out for that. But that's basically what the numbers on the right side of the HUD do and what they mean. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate what happens if you release the torpedoes before the sidebars on the aiming reticle get parallel when they're uh, in the V-shape like you see here on the normal aiming reticle. So I'm going to initiate my dive bomb run. You see there's a wide cone there and now that it's green you can release the torpedoes and when I do you can see how they go at an extreme angle like that. They are not parallel. So that's what happens when you release them too early. We're going to do another dive bomb attempt and demonstrate what happens if you let them parallel out. So here is the cone. You see the sidebars are going parallel. Once they parallel out, when you release the torpedoes, you can see how they are straight as an arrow like that instead of what you saw previously. So you want to keep that in mind as you're uh, making your torpedo run. Okay, so now we're going to take a torpedo run at the Queen Elizabeth here. You see I hit R2. There's that countdown. Now it's green and I can release the torpedoes when I want. I'm letting the sidebars straighten out. I get within 1.2 kilometers and I hit R2 and release the torpedoes again. And there you see that's going to be two pretty good hits. And my uh, torpedo bombers got taken out there. But that's basically how you do dive bombing. Going to hit the down D-pad and immediately go back to the aircraft carrier. Now I'm going to select AP bombs. So now we're going to take off with the armor-piercing dive bombers. 
So here I'm in the armor-piercing dive bombers. You can see the right joystick does allow you to scan around and kind of get the lay of the land. There's a battleship out there, 14 kilometers, or a cruiser out there, 14 kilometers away. I'm going to take a dive bomb run on this Bayern over here. So the way that you do that is you take the aiming reticle here and you hit the R2 button right in front of the ship so that when it turns green, uh, the battleship will drift right into your bomb. So right now I'm going to release the dive bombs. And you can see I got a Citadel hit. That is awesome. As I hit R2 and I'm making my dive bomb run, you can make fine adjustments to the aiming reticle with the left joystick button. So here I'm hitting R2 and here I'm moving the joystick button to center the aiming reticle on the ship. And so you can make an adjustment with the left joystick button. You can also pull back on the throttle while you're doing that to slow down your dive. And you pretty much make these adjustments every time you do a dive bomb run. You're also doing the same adjustment when you're doing a torpedo run. Well, if you have made it this far, you have graduated Aircraft Carrier Flight School. You can leave a comment in the comment section to let us know. This is the Jaguar. I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.